Ellen, you got in. They finally, they finally sent me an invitation. <laughs> Incredible. Yay. <laughs> Only a year and a half later. <laughs> Nobody else is waiting right now, so that's good. So you'll share your screen. I'll watch for the participants. Sarah? Um, or oh, vice versa, if you have it up. I don't have it up right now. Sorry, say it again. Or I, I'm happy to watch for participants. I don't have the agenda. Um, I'd have to like go in my email and download it. So I haven't okay. made Sarah co-host yet. All right, I'll, so yeah. So you, you watch the participants then and okay. promote them all to panelists. I just promoted Gavin Defina. Okay. Um, so I will get rid of participants. Gavin and Lauren, I don't know if you can hear me, but I've promoted you to panelists, so you should be able to click um, the invitation and log back in as a panelist, which will allow you to, um, to speak and turn on your cameras. Just see if there's any... Looks like Gavin raised his hand. There he goes. We haven't quite started, but uh, Gavin, if you wanted to say something, you could. Yeah, hi, I'm Gavin. This is my friend, Lauren. Well, um, we're taking an introduction to community engagement class at UMass Amherst, and one of our assignments is to um, attend a public meeting. And so that's why we're here today, just to see how they work and how they, and we're going like, to, we have a project due in a couple of weeks about, and we write about it and stuff like that. Great. Welcome. Um, Thank Welcome. You. Yeah, and uh, we'll probably have you introduce yourself again once everyone else joins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else coming in? Yeah. Um, Lena, Augustine. Um, I've promoted you to panelists. There should be a button for you to click on, so that then you'll be able to talk and share your camera. Okay. So where is the rest of the committee, though? <laughs> Did anyone say they weren't making it today? Just Bennett. Shoshana is often late and Brit, I don't know. Oh, does anyone have Brit's phone number? No, I don't. I'll send her an email. All right. Um, 
Frustrating to not have a quorum yet. <laughs> Would you like me to text um, Shoshana? Sure. Okay. And do you want to take minutes, Ellen? Sure. <laughs> up. I want to officially remind everybody that we are recording at the moment, um, even though we haven't officially started the uh, meeting. Um, is Julian coming or, or you said Bennett cannot come? You're on yeah. mute, Henry. Okay. Um, Julian is coming. Bennett's not. Julian's having trouble getting on. Okay. I someone to text him the link, which would be the link from the town website, not the official link. Um, I can only email it to him. Um, I can text it if you give me his num his yeah. Hold on. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, what's his phone number? Four one three. Yeah. Six five eight. Seven six one one. So I'll get the link off the town website or should I send them a panelist one? No, send them the link off the town website. Okay. Yeah. All right, let me go find it. And Gavin and your friend whose name I already forgot, um, if you want to show up, we can at least orient you to what we're going to do today and discuss our committee. And Leanne, if you want to join too. Has she been promoted? Sarah, there you are. Hi. Welcome. Um, so we're a um, town, official town government committee or made up of volunteers. Our job is to um, help the tree warden make decisions around protecting street trees. Um, we discuss all kinds of things. We educate people about the importance of street trees. And then if someone wants to remove a public shade tree, which is a tree within the right of way of the town, then we meet and discuss that. And we advise the tree warden who's sitting here, Alan Snow, and he makes the final decision. <laughs> We're an advisory committee. Um, I'll put the agenda up. You can see some of the things we're gonna talk about today. Share screen there we go.
Why is it not letting me share? Uh -huh, hold on. There we go. Okay, can everyone see that? Yes. Yes. Great. Um, just make your pictures bigger. There we go. So as an official government agency, we do have to take minutes, record minutes, you know, approve them, et cetera. Um, then we give our reports. I'll explain what's come in on email and things like that. Um, and then we have these various issues we're talking about. That's under number six, presentations and discussions. So you see, we do quite a varied list of different things. And uh, that'll become clearer as we go on. Do you have any questions? No? Okay. Unfortunately, without having four of our seven members here, we can't have an official meeting, so. I think Julian is coming. Hi, all. I just arrived. Apologies, I'm late. We've been having some trouble getting the Wi-Fi to work. <laughs> okay, Julian's our vice chair. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute. Okay. Liana, do you want to uh, tell us what brings you here today? Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, um, I'm Liana Gustin. I am a grad student at UMass studying regional planning and architecture. Um, for one of my assignments, we're um, going to different meetings and just seeing how each department functions. So that's um, kind of my reasoning for being here. Um, I'm also working on a project in Amherst. Um, so just learning more about um, different projects in Amherst as well. So, yeah. What is your product project about? Um, right now, I'm working on, um, they're doing a pavilion at the Renaissance Center. Um, so I'm helping doing some drafting work for the firm that's working on that. And then um, for class, I'm also working on um, a fire station project because um, I think they're replacing uh, the Department of Public Works site with a new fire station. So I'm making up conceptual ideas for that project as well. Great. Well, Alan works at the DPW building, so. <laughs> Shoshana's coming. Okay. So we, we should have a quorum then. There she is. We have a quorum now. Oh, good. So, uh, but we'll wait one more minute. <laughs> I'll put the agenda back up. So are there any other announcements or public comments? No, okay. Uh, can we approve the September minutes? Does anyone have any changes or corrections? All right. Henry, did you send them out? I couldn't find them in the email. They go out, yep. Um, okay. Yeah. Did you send them out really early or? Yeah, I sent them out right after the last meeting. Oh, I think no, I sent, I'm sorry. I think yeah. I sent them out the day after the meeting. I meant the agenda. I'm sorry. Um, oh. oh, the agenda. Yeah, yeah that went out. Yeah, but yeah. here you can see the agenda up here. Yeah, I can. Yeah. yeah. It all goes out. But uh, yeah. All right. Um, so uh, all in favor of approving the minutes? Okay. Julian, all right, great. We can see Julian. There you go. So we have Hi. We've the minutes. I'll get them posted. And volunteer hours. We record all the hours we put into uh, the committee. And when we um, apply for a Tree City USA award, then the total of volunteer hours is one of the things that we use to show that we're active. So I put in about um, maybe 18 hours this month. Sarah? Two. Uh, Julian? 15. Okay, Ellen? Five. Shoshana? Um, five. OK, 
Okay. Um, and we don't know about Bennett and who else am I missing? Britt, right. I didn't hear back from her. Let me just actually check that. Nope, nothing from Britt. Okay. Um, okay. So that's the volunteer hours. And then there were several volunteers at the tree planting. So maybe five people for a couple hours each. That sound about right, right? So that'd be another 10 hours. Good. Yeah. All right, my chair's report. Um, not a ton of things going on. That's the wrong piece of paper. Where's my, oh yeah. Um, did you guys, anybody interested in doing the DCR training, Department of Conservation and Recreation training? When is it? That's on Friday, it's the 14th, yeah, Friday. What time if it's not in my school day? No, it, it was in one of the emails I sent. Okay, great, let me find it, thank you. So, it may be too late to sign up, but it's a really great thing. Sarah, have you done that? Yes, I did it my first year. It was great. Um, Julian, I remember it being all day and all day affair. Um, it's changed this year. It is it different? Even, but, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a much smaller thing this year. Um, but it was great. There were a lot of really good speakers. Um, everyone knows Alan. So that was a great way for me to connect, um, you know, mentioning that I'm on the tree committee and that I knew Alan and um, a lot of the people were uh, other tree wardens, um, you know, from different places around the state. Um, and there were some really great talks about invasive species. Um, we did a tree planting as a large group, um, reviewed tree planting. Um, and then there were a number of different uh, speakers. So it, it, really, it really was a great conference. I was glad that I went. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I recommend everyone on the committee doing it if they can. Julian, it would definitely help you. Um, I was at the Big E helping out in the Maple, Nass Maple booth, and Mindy Dom was there with her um, legislative assistant. So we talked quite a bit about trees, and uh, she's a big fan of ours and uh, always um, shares our, our Facebook posts and things. Um, so I talked to her about some of the issues we've talked about that need to happen on a statewide issue. She's supportive, but needs more information, which I sent her. Um, and Thursday, Julie and I are gonna talk at the Mass Tree Wardens and Forest Association meeting in Northampton. And I'm hoping to encourage other towns to also contact their Congress people and state senators to really push some of these issues. So um, I can talk more about the issues later, but uh, we'll see if there's time later at the meeting. Um, I talked to Paul Bockelman, the town manager. We're still not um, able to go to live meetings, although someone had told me we were. That's not true. So uh, he knows we want to. <laughs> I think we do. I want to at least. Yeah. And then the only other thing I have is uh, this Sunday, I'll be giving my tree talk at the Unitarian Church in Greenfield. Instead of the sermon, I'll be the the sermon, I guess, you know, we'd be talking about trees and how incredibly complex they are. So that's open to the public. If you want to come at 1030 next Sunday, um, you can hear me talk about trees. And uh, I think that's all. Uh, Julian, you want to do the vice chair report? Sure, thank you. Um, so vice chair's report, a few things to cover is just that Henry and I are speaking at the Tree Wardens and Foresters Conference. I think that's noted. Um, one other thing is that I am planning to meet with the town manager um, sometime in the coming weeks in the morning. So if there was anything we wanted to bring up, uh, it's related to climate and that type of stuff. So if we wanted to speak on that, we absolutely could. Um, if there's anything you all would want me to bring up. The other thing I would note is that we, um, or at least I was working with the, oh, uh, what was it? It was the folks from the Gazette on, they were asking me some questions about 
like what has happened with the Mary Maple, et cetera. Scott said he wasn't gonna publish an article, but was interested in hearing from me. And um, the other thing I would note is that there is a community event uh, at the Amherst Historical Society, I believe this weekend, uh, surrounding eco grief and that type of thing under their large tree um, in front of the Historical Society. And I think that is all for me. Great. Social media is doing well. Okay. Alan, Tree Warden's report. All right. Um, see, uh, looks like we're going to have a potential tree hearing coming up soon for the Pomeroy West Street slash 116 roundabout project. There's one town tree, uh, it's about a 12 inch tree. And then one, um, I'm not sure if it's actually a town tree or not, if it's outside the public way, but it's pretty close. There's also a cedar tree <clears throat> on the uh, corner of Pomeroy and um, West Street. So that might be coming up for next month. So I'll try to narrow that down and get the word out so we can get everything posted properly and everything. Um, uh, <clears throat> As you're collecting your hours, I was uh, remembering that uh, Tree City USA application will be coming due in two months, roughly speaking. Um, and we always seem to get caught short a little bit in kind of preparing some of our documents and you know the uh, detailed um, accomplishments of the Shade Tree Committee. Um, I also need to do a better job on my end. Nobody ever sees the report, it kind of goes into a, it's all in line, <clears throat> but um, it is a good way for us to, to make note of everything that we do accomplish in, in our tree program in town. So, um, and if we do a good job on preparing that, then we can maybe do a better job on preparing things to be released, you know, locally to gain people's attention, so anything like that. Um, we also have a growth award, which, you know, is, doing projects which are bigger, uh, different than we've done in the past, um, can be just, you know, um, doesn't have to be monetary, but it just be something for education and outreach or, or it can be monetary. So we can um, spend more time kind of thinking about that and seeing if we can actually apply for part of that um, growth award for the town. Um, we still have um, uh, some of the White Pine Street move on McClellan Street. Uh, the project is moving very quickly and we need to get those down. While I was on vacation, I gave my crew a nice list of things to accomplish as far as tree work goes. And unfortunately our bucket truck went in for its annual safety inspection and the auxiliary electric motor, uh, which can run the hydraulics on the truck, uh, failed the test, even though you never use it unless it's you know, an emergency and the hydraulics go down, uh, they won't let the truck run without that auxiliary motor. So um, it was down for most of my two weeks of being away and they, they managed to get a few things done, but they didn't get as much accomplished. Um, so we're looking to get those McCullen Street down, trees down soon. Um, so that sidewalk project can get done. I do have, um, four trees selected, uh, four ginkgos selected for plantings along McClellan Street that um, I will have on hand and would like to plant this fall. And I also have two trees on hand for Lincoln for a planting um, that I've been working on with a resident there. It's, they're public, public shade trees, but um, I've been working with a resident to replace one that we had to take down a, dying Norway maples. So um, those are plantings that either the crew or maybe the Shady community can help plant uh, in November, but we'll see. I'd like to get it done by the crew. It just depends on you know, what we have available for time. Um, what else? Um, Amherst College reached out to me to see their they're actually looking at believe to apply for a tree campus USA designation. And it's something that I've asked them to do for a number of years. Um, 
and there's been some changes there and it looks like they're interested in applying for that uh, status and so they asked um, if I would be interested in participating in their they were going to form a you know a group uh, committee essentially to um, work help the college uh, with this tree planting and tree you know tree care uh, so I might um, join their committee um, they haven't gotten back to me yet on when the first meeting's going to be um, yeah, potentially sure. what was that I'm sure uh, any one of us would be happy to join them and help them yeah. in any way we can. Yeah. Um, you know, the McClellan Street tree, you know, uh, the resident on McClellan Street removed a lot of private trees. There were Nor Norris spruces, they were significant in size, and, you know, it kind of caught everyone's attention. Um, a lot of the folks who were involved on uh, Fearing Street and Sunset. Um, were concerned. Um, there's a lot of interest in that group to potentially, you know, work, you know, to help uh, with a significant tree um, policy or ordinance or, um, you know, some form of uh, way to monitor removal of private trees. Um, so, that might be a good uh, resource as we, you know, move into the slow time after planting season and maybe begin jumping back in on the uh, significant tree ordinance for private trees. So we'll see where that goes. Um, I think that's about it for now. All right, thanks. Um, so treasurer's report, Sarah. Uh, the account balance is eighteen thousand nine hundred fifty and eighty nine cents, which reflects a okay. number of um, okay. transactions. Um, okay. There have been a donation in September, um, and a, a number of different payments came out um, in. September, August, and July. So I think that we are up to date. It was the donation for $500? There was a donation for 500, but that was, I believe, back in July. There was also a $300 donation in September. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, we should find out who that came from so we can send a thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, unfortunately, that's all the information they have on the account record. So if anyone knows, let me know. Ready. Sarah, I just want to confirm that amount, 18,950 and 50 cents. 950 and 89 cents. 89, thank you. That's great. Um, I don't know who did the 300. The 500 was from uh, Hampshire Village where we planted trees um, last, last year. So that replaces this check I can rip up, which was made out to me personally yeah. instead of the town. So. To use it, but I did. All right, thanks. Uh, let's move on to presentations and discussion. Henry, can I jump in on that just for a second? Yes. Um, so I just want to make sure the committee is clear. If somebody makes a donation um, and it gets sent to one of you for some reason, um, uh, that needs to come to me. I need to, there's a process at DPW to log that in and then send it to the town hall so that way we capture all the information who sent it and everything if it just goes ends up going to the you know town hall we can't track it um and there's no guarantee it's going to get put in the tree planting fund <laughs> so well this money apparently did go in the tree planting fund it didn't come to me did it come to anyone else mm -hmm. they might have just mailed the donation to the town yeah they just mailed it to the town but it didn't get you know logged in yeah um, yeah through DPW, so, yeah. All right, well, thank you, whoever you were. All right, uh, town tree inventory, anything new on that? No updates. Okay, social media update. 
Shoshana uh, or Julian, yeah. Yeah, for the Instagram, I posted something in uh, right before our Woodside planting for on the little story to remind people. And other than that, uh, we haven't had many updates. I think we got two new followers this month. Okay. Might be good if you um, posted our upcoming meeting also. Yeah, certainly. I'll do the that. Link. I did that today on Facebook, but Shoshana, if you could do that sooner on Facebook, it'd be great. And Julian, you on Instagram. Yeah, good. Okay. Okay. Um, tree tour. Ellen, anything on that? No? Nope. All right. I'll start having a little more time after this week. So maybe beginning of next month, we should set a meeting date and talk about the flyer and, you know, the, okay. the printed brochure. Okay, second Saturday plantings. We had a great time uh, last Saturday. It was really nice. The weather was great. Lots of neighborhood help. Britt got donuts for everybody, which is a nice addition. Um, and uh, the big question is, should we do a November planting or a work day? Or is it getting too cold and late by then? Yeah, I mean, I think we'll just have to wait and see what the weather does. Um, well, we should be able to at least do a, a work day, if not a planting. Oh, yeah, definitely. If it's, yeah. Okay. We'll wait and see what the weather does. And if it's too cold, we will we'll do a work day. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So everyone plan on second Saturday in November that we'll be out from nine to noon somewhere working on trees, taking care of them or planting new ones. Great. Um, we should think about where those might be. Do we want to decide that now? Yeah, I mean, I um, we started grinding some of the stumps on orchard. Um, you know, we could continue with orchard. Um, we could try to do more on the Collins Street. I would like to think that by then the uh, sidewalk project will be mostly done on McClellan. Um, so we could do either two mm -hmm. good options. And if we do a work day. Mm. I'll think about that. Okay. All right. Well, I'll just save the date and uh, we will do something in November. And then we should start thinking about places to plant trees next year. We start again in April. Okay. The History Museum, anything new on that? No update. Okay. So anything we need to be doing or just waiting to hear about the grant. No, the grant, we have all the information we need about the grant. It's just a matter of my, um, my, hate to use this term, my bandwidth right now to uh, just try to take on that project. So I, I just need to get a few things, which I thought we would have done by now off my plate so I can focus more on the history museum. Um, okay. Because the grant was awarded so late, we do have until you know, June of next year to, to actually, you know, do that project, so. Um. We'll keep it on the agenda. Uh, North Common, Mary Maple, has there been any word from Paul or any news? I did receive news today from Paul officially. Uh, his decision has been to remove the Mary Maple and the other two trees, um, and that uh, we should try to do that um, before Thanksgiving. Is it possible to wait till after Christmas, as some people have asked? Um, I don't know the details. My understanding is that they are, they're coming up with a alternative uh, event for the Merry Maple. Um, I've been asked to reach out to all the people who had contacted us about getting pieces of the tree to make art or furniture or um, you know, memorabilia of the tree. Um, so I need to put a list together, um, contact those people and get some contract. We're gonna use uh, contractors to take down the Mary Maple. So we wanna use a crane so that we can dismantle the tree um, carefully uh, in larger pieces versus smaller, um, 
smaller chunks of wood and things like that if we did it in-house. Um, so that's... Uh, Britt just no. joined the meeting. Sorry to interrupt, okay. Alan, just wanted to let you know. Great. Sorry, I joined a little while ago, but I think it was as a, like a guest that wasn't able to do anything, so. <laughs> Can we see you also, or? There she is. Oh, there. Can you? Let's see. Great. All right. Um, I was going to say, uh, so uh, is that something publicized now on Instagram and Facebook and ask people if they want a piece of the wood? Yeah, um, I, I, you know, I'm having a meeting on Thursday to discuss how we want to um, publicize the, the uh, process, how, you know, you need to have control over, you can't just have a bunch of trucks showing up to pick up wood and people with chainsaws trying to cut <laughs> pieces off some hair and maple wood. Um, and we have to come up with a, a plan that's safe and, and fair and gives people a chance to you know, maybe we need to come up with, uh, you know, if you want a piece of Mary Maple, maybe we take some some of our staff time to cut pieces of wood, wood rounds or something like that, that people can take home. Um, so I guess I'd, I'd like to wait till after I've had that meeting and we can discuss how we want to okay. officially advertise it. Okay. I think that it'd be cool be if we could get like one giant round to like maybe put someplace special, you know, like polish it up and stick somewhere eventually. Use it at the Arbor Day table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roll it out. Yeah, I would, I would just add that I have been in kind of informal conversation with a couple of people. Um, so I think all of you probably know that the, the, hearing on the Mary Maple, the minutes from that were shared and written up in the um, a couple of papers locally. And so one of the things that I had said about um, doing something to kind of commemorate the tree, I had a bunch of people reach out to me after that, um, including from the Chamber of Commerce, including a couple of, or at least one um, council person um, and you know, some of them have circled back. So I would be very interested in, in helping to put something together um, to kind of commemorate the tree as a community. Um, you know, Alan, if that comes up tomorrow, you can you can say that I'm interested in helping out on that, if that matters. That's great, thank you. I can, um, maybe we can merge our, our list of people who are interested and in, in try to um, you know, reach out to them all yeah, it sounds like there are a lot of conversations going on in parallel, uh, but no like official conversation, <laughs> or maybe that's the official conversation, and then various other actors think that their conversation is the official one, but it's not. So, yeah. perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah. So after this is. Um, after you have that meeting, I think it'd be really good for us to publicize this on social media. It's another way to reach out to people. So we wait for that. Um, town budget line item. No update. I noted that the town put a significant amount of funding aside for like roads and another chunk for us, the track um, in a recent meeting. And Dorothy Pam, one of our town counselors, suggested a shade tree line item at that meeting, but it didn't get any traction. Rather, it got no response. All right, so it might be at some point of time for us to really push, write letters to the editor, write, you know, show up at council meetings and push for this. But we'll pass on that for now. Uh, old items, connection with Stockbridge School. Anything happening there? Uh, I need to. I need to get on that. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Northampton Road, Shoshana, have you been following up and taking photos and things? 
I'm totally doing that this week. <laughs> Good. Let's get these things moving off the old ongoing items list. Yeah. Library trees. Sarah, are you working on that? Yes. Um, no update. I can reach out to um, my contact on the library committee um, if we would like to invite them to our next meeting. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, I Well, the update is, uh, Alan, after your comment, when we looked at the plans about there being more trees removed than it looks like there were on the plan we saw, um, I dug in a little bit deeper and there is a discrepancy. So they have in that one plan set, they have one plan that shows most trees being saved and on just a couple removals. And then they have another plan in the same plan set that shows more being marked for removal. Um, so there's there's an update somewhere that didn't get updated throughout the entire package. Um, so that's uh, something to, to follow up on that um, I'll hopefully get cleared up um, if I get uh, any word on that. Um, prior to our meeting, I can send out uh, an email. Otherwise, we can just have um, a guest speaker at our next meeting. I'll try to arrange that for November. Thanks for looking into that. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Um, and I haven't seen anything in the news saying things are moving ahead. So that's my job is to let you know of that. So, um, all right. Uh, website update. Well, Bennett's not here, so probably nothing there. Complete street state level initiatives. That's what Julian and I are doing Thursday with the Mass Tree Wardens and Foresters. And my meeting with Mindy Dom was helpful. She's really great. She's really supportive um, and has offered to come meet with us. So I think we'll let her know about having her come back for a meeting. And I'll reach out again to Joe Comerford soon. Um, significant tree ordinance. Any movement there? Alan, you did mention people were interested in that. So. Yeah, there's, well, there's, you know, they're seeing in their neighborhood, they've seen a lot of, you know, trees removed. Um, and they're, they're on private property and some of them were on public property. Um, and they're, you know, they are referencing other communities that have significant tree ordinances. Um, and they're interested in, you know, why doesn't Amherst have one? So, should we invite them to our meeting next month? If you want to start picking that up and working on it, um, wouldn't be a bad thing to do. Um, that I was invited to attend a uh, either one of their Sunday brunches or. Um, nightly, they have a meeting occasionally in the evening um, of the neighborhood, and then they have a Sunday brunch with the neighborhood once a, once a month, it sounds like. Um, and I, I offered to come and talk to that group about, you know, Amherst trees, Amherst urban forest. Um, and they said, you know, whichever one you want to come to, please come and discuss. So I can um, move that up on my agenda make that conversation happen and then see if they're interested in helping or discussing the uh, significant tree ordinance. Okay. Sorry, who who is this group? Um, I don't know what their official name is. It's a it's a Faring Street Lincoln okay. neighborhood group. Got it. They've so been it, came, meeting. it came out of all the removals that yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. And they've actually have a long history of having these, you know, once a month Sunday brunches. Uh, we've been doing it for quite a long time. <laughs> so it uh, seems to be an organized group. Would you be interested in having committee members attend that at all? Um, I can ask if, I mean, I wouldn't have any objection to that. Um, I can ask them. Well, I was thinking Sarah might be especially useful for you to go. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, I, I would like to continue to work on that project. I just, I think it'd be best if I was partnered or if someone else is interested or if this group 
is interested. Um, you know, if I have someone who's kind of keeping me accountable and giving me some deadlines and stuff, um, that's just going to be easier. And, you know, someone that I can also, um, share the load with, uh, a lot of the literature reviews, a lot of reading, and I just don't have as much time to devote to that these days as I did prior. Um, so Sarah, is it just a matter of trying to get a sense of what other communities are doing with significant tree ordinances? Yeah, yep. So we've, we've done a bunch of research. We have a draft already. Um, it's very bare bones. And I think that one of the selling points, I mean, it's great to get the community involved, but one of the selling points in order to get it to pass um, and it's a piece of legislature is going to be um, having a robust literature review basically right. of saying what other communities are doing right um, and I, and how it's working and how you know that sort of thing as well as obvious community support um for for this, this new piece of right. uh, legislature um i would be happy to help with that great okay um yeah just being sharing some of that that reading load and and notes would be super helpful so thanks a lot Britt. great yeah i'd like so i'd like to see those connections made between Britt and Sarah, you guys in the, the committee if that Alan's talking about. Um, great. Okay. Um, for you newcomers, um, right now we have laws that protect street trees, trees within the public right of way, but trees on private property in backyards or people own a woodlot in town, we have no control over that. And because of the importance of trees in this day and age, particularly always, but certainly more so now, we're trying to see if we can create an ordinance that will protect the largest trees in Amherst, ones two or more feet in diameter. Um, we, haven't we haven't finalized the number yet, but, um, and some towns have that. Uh, you know, consider part of the urban forest, the urban canopy, and we wanna protect those trees, so. That's what that's about. Okay, um, Solar Bylaw Group, Julian. Yeah, so um, I went to their last meeting, which was actually a public hearing um, about their work and they were doing that with the ECAC. I brought up the idea of like neighborhood solar that similar to what Alan and you were talking about with having like one uh, solar area that's distributed among a number of homes. And I got some nods, some response. And uh, one member asked like, how would it be funded, et cetera. But other than that, not much. They're still in their process of drafting a bylaw. And that was their meeting to seek public input in that type of thing. Okay. Thank you for doing that. You'll keep us posted on that. All right. Um, are there other comments or other things we need to discuss? I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. Um, if not, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, statewide issues I mentioned earlier. Um, so, as so I don't have them right in front of me. Uh, hold on. Well, there's, uh, for those who don't know, there's a, the law that governs and protects shade trees in Massachusetts is called Mass General Law Chapter 87. And this was a law that was passed 100 years ago. And still on the books, it says if you crash your horse and buggy into a tree and harm it, you have to pay. But there's nothing in the law that says if you crash your truck into it. So it's quite outdated. Um, the fines are quite low. Um, the requirements to be a, a tree warden in a town, every town in Massachusetts has to have a tree warden, but the requirements of the tree warden are very minimal. So we're trying to say, look, you know, tree science has really advanced in the last hundred years. We know a lot more people who are tree wardens need to know a lot more things like that. So that's one of the big statewide issues. And it almost passed right before COVID hit. And then the legislature went into a tailspin and uh, they didn't get back to it. So we're trying to push that to happen now. Um, one other thing we're trying to do, as Julian mentioned, you know, right now people get great tax credits to 
cut down forests and put up uh, solar farms. I mean, you put up a solar farm anyway, it's great tax credits. And that's a good thing. But if you're clearing, clear cutting forests to put up the solar farm, then that really, we think, defeats the purpose. So we're trying to get that law changed a little bit. Similarly, the, another issue is the Complete Streets Program in Massachusetts, which is a program that tries to get every street, anytime you do a repair work on a street, if you want to get state funding, you have to put in bike lanes and um, places for buses to pull off and things like that, sidewalks. So that's all great, but since we have very narrow streets and trees are not mentioned in this law, it means every time you widen the street for that stuff, you're gonna be cutting the trees down and removing any chance of putting in new trees. So we're trying to get trees included in that. And then the fourth thing is a bill that came up and then went down, but it's still alive um, to create a funding mechanism for more trees in towns across the state. So in order for those things to happen, we really need to be pushing, like I said, our state senator and rep, Mindy Dom and Joe Comerford are total supporters, but other parts of the state, they're not hearing from people. So we're trying to really push to get everyone everywhere to motivate it to pass this. The other thing I would note is that we are talking about that um, at the Tree Wardens and Foresters Conference this Thursday. On Thursday, yeah. So lots to do uh, in town, things to do, and statewide and probably nationwide and internationally. So we do our part. Um, we welcome uh, all of you to, oh, go ahead. Henry, I just want to add that uh, it is that Western Mass Tree Wardens and Forest Association dinner meeting. <laughs> it's not really a conference. Um, and uh, if anybody wants to attend it, it is, uh, you know, five o'clock tomorrow, uh, Thursday evening at the Blue Bonnet Diner. And for, you know, 30 bucks or so, you get some good CEUs and uh, a meal and you get to meet a bunch of other people working in the, either as, you know, municipal tree care or private tree care. Um, and the second presentation is the exciting topic of uh, Mass Department of Labor and Safety uh, and what they do for uh, making sure that municipalities follow all of OSHA's guidelines. So um, thrilling topic. <laughs> I, I would maybe put out there that whoever is able to attend could kind of informally maybe find out which Western mass towns have significant tree ordinances as a as a good starting point for local comparison. Um, I don't know if that's possible, but if it comes up in conversation and and um, or maybe Sarah, you've already figured out which which local municipalities already have that. But anyway, uh, some but nothing comprehensive. I don't think any in Western Mass have it. Got Possibly it. in Springfield, oh. I don't know. I, Springfield. I, Springfield definitely does. It's very old. It's, okay. it's, it's sort of antiquated, but, um, and then Northampton has something. And, and again, it's um, yeah, yeah. more through the design review process. So it is only activated once you begin a project. It. it wouldn't stop somebody from just cutting down a bunch of trees. Right. Or it wouldn't it's, be activated by some, yeah. It's linked to their zoning board of appeals. Got it. Alan, um, what's the name of the dinner, the group? That's yeah, the um, Western Mass Tree Wardens and Foresters Association. So I'm a member of the Mass Tree Wardens and Foresters Association. And we, about six or seven years ago, we started a Western Mass chapter so that people out in Western Mass can have some uh, continuing education opportunities. Um, and because uh, everything is out east, so um, okay. it's been pretty successful. So, thank you. All right. So, um, Gavin and Leanna, do you have any questions or anything you would like to say? No. All right. Well, I wish you all great luck in your projects and please uh, join us second Saturday in November. Um, if you send your email addresses to me, I can put you on our list so you know what's happening with us. Um, my email is, well, 
the shade tree committee, shade tree CMT at gmail.com. So we send once a month newsletter blast out with what we're doing and what's happening and uh, yeah, interesting tree news. All right, if there's nothing else, I will say we can close the meeting. All right, thanks everybody. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.